bring in our legal analyst for this morning. Joining us now, we have trial attorney Byron Brown. Thanks so much for being with us. So you, you, you watch that hearing, and there's several issues here because obviously it is a relative of the victims, of two of the victims who found this piece of evidence that we would ordinarily have police discover you know, from the crime scene, and it happened months after, after the crimes occurred. So right off the bat, do you see this as problematic? Yeah, it's problematic. I mean, it, it, it potentially could be really good for the prosecution if the shell casing matches the gun of the accused. But yeah, to your point, I mean, months have passed, days have passed. The weather has, you know, run through this area how many ever times. And um, there's always going to be the question of the chain of command of, of custody as well of the shell casing. Well, so there's going to be questions as it relates to authenticating it and then also to the preservation of it. So it is coincidental that you mentioned that because, first of all, actually that shell casing did turn out to be a match of the defendant's gun. Um, so it is a big piece of evidence for the prosecution. And the other piece of it, you hit the nail on the head without me even telling you, the defense actually filed a motion to dismiss this case just based on the chain of evidence. Obviously, they weren't successful. We're going to trial. But they're trying to get that piece of evidence excluded. We don't know if they will. What do you think? Well, I mean, if the judge already ruled on getting the, 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 the casing in and the judge ruled it in, then it's likely it's going to come in at the time of trial. But what's more interesting is that there'll be an appealable issue in my mind. So if they end up getting the accused and he ends up guilty by way of a jury, then his team will have an appealable issue, that being the shell casing coming in as evidence. That's fascinating. So later today, there is a pretrial hearing that will be held uh, regarding this case. And this is one of the matters that the judge is expected to take up. So hopefully we'll find, we'll find out pretty soon what the decision will be for this particular trial. But I had not even thought about what this could do even after trial. Um, how soon do you think we'd get a sense of, of when this could potentially be appealable? Well, it obviously won't be until the, the jury returns. So whenever the jury returns, how many ever days this trial takes, and then after the jury returns a verdict, the defense will have so long, just like the prosecution would as well, to file an appeal. Yeah, yeah. So definitely an issue that we're going to want to keep an eye on here throughout this trial, I would imagine. Any other concerns just listening to, to that testimony? No, I, I think just the biggest concern, and if you're the defense, you're going to attack this throughout the whole course of the trial as it relates to the casing of how long that casing's been there and then how reliable it is. Um, assuming the defense is going to come up with a, a many different arguments to argue why that casing could be there, meaning was it there for months before the alleged, alleged murders took place? Um, that's going to be the main question. And if you're the defense, that's a big hole that you have to run through. You have to create speculation within the jury that that shell casing for whatever reason, was there long before the murders took place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And, of course, we're going to check back in with you for more analysis. And this is a case we're going to be watching very closely. In fact, straight ahead, the victim's sister...